All righty, uh, this is Nate Storm with Bright Agritech, and today we're going to talk about iron. Iron is one of the most abundant elements on the face of the planet, and yet there it's oftentimes deficient in aquaponic systems. And the reason for that is that iron is either available or it's not. And that makes sense, right? Uh, some elements are available at certain pHs, some at certain temperatures, yada, yada, yada. Iron exists in two main states in aquatic systems, okay? We have iron with two charges, with two uh, positive charges, okay? And we've got iron with three, all right? So this iron here is ferrous iron, and this is soluble. This is ferric iron and this is not soluble, okay? So um, ferrous iron here and ferric iron are trading spots pretty often depending on temperature, depending on pH, depending on, um, you know, basically uh, different, different states of the system. So um, what we need to do is understand how these uh, different types of iron uh, come into the system and are removed from the system, become soluble and become insoluble so that we can treat our plants uh, with appropriate amounts of iron and make sure that we're um, getting them the iron they need. So ferrous iron, soluble iron, okay? Soluble iron exists primarily in anaerobic, air, there we go. I didn't do very well in spelling. Anaerobic conditions and low pH, okay? And at low pH. And ferric iron, insoluble, exists primarily in uh, aerobic and high pH conditions. So, when you look at these different, um, these different conditions, you see that most aquaponic systems are aerobic, right? We want our systems to be good and aerobic, and most of them have relatively high pH. That's bad news. What it means is that most of the iron in our system is unavailable to our plants, right? Because it's aerobic and it's high pH. Now, this is not uncommon in the plant world, and over time, plants have developed a lot of really interesting ways to get iron out of the system. Um, one thing uh, that some plants will do is they'll actually secrete uh, hydrogen ions across their roots, so they'll acidify the, the water right around their roots. And what that does is it makes um, iron more available. Also, um, you know, they've, they've developed these really interesting compounds called um, chelating agents, or uh, in plants they're called phytosiderophores. Um, but there's a whole bunch of different chelating agents out there. And when we talk about chelation, we're basically just talking about making ferric iron, okay, this insoluble form of iron, making it soluble by attaching a special molecule to it. So these special molecules are usually things like amino acids or other organic molecules. And what they do is they bind to this iron, okay, this insoluble iron that exists in aerobic systems and exists at relatively high pH, and it makes it so it can dissolve into the solution. So these, this is precipitated out, and that chelating agent binds to this iron and allows it to dissolve into the solution and move through the system and eventually land on the plant roots or in the area of the plant roots, and the plants can actually take that iron up. So there are all sorts of natural compounds that chelate iron. But we've also got some artificial ones, okay? And these artificial ones are really handy for us because they allow us to make iron available in, in aerobic conditions and in conditions where pH can sometimes be fairly high. Conditions where iron almost always becomes uh, uh, ferric, essentially, so it becomes insoluble. So we can take conditions that would lead to insoluble iron and we can suddenly, with these magical chelating agents, make iron available to our plants. Um, so today I'm not going to talk too much about natural chelating agents, but um, I'll probably uh, talk about on the website at some point about using barley, using some other plants um, to chelate iron in your systems. Um, today I'm going to talk primarily about how we add iron to our systems in order to make it available. 
And uh, to do that, we have um, basically three different options as far as chelated iron goes. Now, the most common one out there is this one. F-E-E-D-T-A. Okay, and I won't get into what all this stands for, but it's a form of chelated iron. And um, I do not recommend this. This is the worst chelated iron to put in your system for a lot of different reasons. First of all, it's toxic, okay? This is actually used as an herbicide, uh, oftentimes to uh, kill certain plants. It's a fairly toxic form of uh, chelated iron. And um, another reason is that it only works well, it's only stable up to a pH of about 6.3. So this kind of defeats the purpose, right? We're not gonna put a toxic substance in our system, and we're not gonna put something in our system that only works up to pH 6.3, because a lot of the time we exceed that. Even in my system, oftentimes we'll run down to the high fives or the low sixes, bump up to the mid sixes, and if I go up above 6.3, then my EDTA isn't delivering much bang for the buck, okay? It's just not that effective at pH is higher than 6.3, so it's, it's worthless. Don't waste your money on it. So the next one, next iron chelate is FEDTPA, okay? And um, this iron chelate is uh, what we use in our system, okay? It's non-toxic, it works really nicely, it's pretty effective, and um, you know, by and large, we're pretty happy with it. I've got a little thing of it here. You see it's a reddish brown powder. Um, and this is, this is what we typically dose in our system. Um, because we can get it here locally and pretty inexpensively. We just actually buy this at our local hardware store. And most folks can find uh, DTPA at their local Ace Hardware or wherever. And, um, you know, it's pretty pricey. You'll pay about $10 a pound for it um, in, in uh, you know, in a powder form. But five pounds will last you for, you know, in our system, we've run uh, the entire system for about three years on five pounds. And we're, we need to go buy some more here. But you know, it a little bit goes a really long ways. So um, FEDTPA is good stuff. I recommend it if your system typically runs at a lower pH, okay? FEDTPA is effective up to a pH of about 7.5, all right? So up into about 7.5, this works very well at binding iron and making it available um, even in aerobic conditions, okay? Good stuff, I highly recommend it. Um, the best stuff though, and this is a little bit harder to find, is F-E-E-D-D-H-A. And this is a really, really good iron, chelating, iron chelation. And um, it's great. It works up to about a pH of about nine. Okay, so almost all beginning systems that are showing some iron deficiency should be using this chelated iron, okay? This is the form of chelated iron you want to use. It's effective up to nine, it's effective down into, you know, the high fives, you, you know, to the point where you don't need it anymore, basically. And um, it's just an all around great chelated iron. So, to recap, FEDTA, it's often sold as an iron to put into aquaponic systems. People that use this in their aquaponic systems are wasting their money most of the time and oftentimes don't understand the effect that this can have on their system. Stay away from this. F-E-E-D-T-A, um, bad stuff, don't use it, don't waste your money. F-E-D-T-P-A, good. F-E-E-D-D-H-A, also good. Both of these forms of iron are great to use in an aquaponic system. All right, so we've talked about um, how iron is or is not available. We've talked about how to make it chemically available. We've explained why using uh, this type of iron is a complete waste of your time, right? It's not gonna be soluble in your system, throwing uh, rust in there or anything like that. Um, we need to be using um, chelated iron in our system. So the next question then is, how do we know how much to put in? So I'm gonna answer that question right now.